everybody for being here today. It is fun day, and the last day of our work camp in Atlanta, and I am so honored to be here. I'm also excited to talk about this topic, and it seems like AI is just everywhere. So, what I want to clarify about is that this is kind of like an introduction, but before I get into it, if I could ask everybody, raise their hands, has anybody in here been trying or using AI? Okay, pretty good. Um, I also would like to know, has anybody tried to use it for project management? No, okay, that's good. So I'll begin with an introduction to how you can use it in project management. So as I go on, I am a project manager, sort of like a fractional project manager, if I could explain who I am. And what I do is I help agencies, small agencies, micro agencies, or even small business owners manage the projects. And that's how I, I kind of fell into it. And let me kind of give you a life story. So this is kind of storytelling time. And this is a real life story. It's not something I would wish on anybody. About eight years ago, yeah, eight to 10 years ago, we sold our house and bought a business. And we had to move out of our house in 30 days and move into a new location out of the state and take over the business in 41 days. So everything had to happen in a span of 45 days. But we had to move out of the house in 30 days. This is where Patrick Manor from Compton at a finance. Get it? So my husband and I, no kids, but a dog and two cats. The house that we were living in, we were living in for 18 years. Three bedroom ranch, two car garage. And my husband was at the time working full time for somebody. October was the time that we were doing it. It was the busiest time of the year. Time for show, trade show, year end wrap up. Me, I was working remotely at the time, freelancing. He said, you got this, babe. <laughs> mm hmm yeah. So what I had to do is I had to work backwards and figure out how to get everything all organized to be able to move out of the house in 30 days. In the house that we've been living in for 18 years. Mind you, for those that have lived in the same house for 18 years. So you can imagine that there are things that we've accumulated over the 18 years, right? So I had to map everything out. So I start backwards, getting, making sure I have my truck ordered, making sure I had batteries, making sure I had the supplies, and then I had to map out what room that I was going to tackle. And then, I, not only that, I had to figure out where we were going to live, where I was going to live. He was not going to move in with me two, two weeks after I moved into the house. So as you can see, so if you can imagine that, I actually achieved my goal, but every box was labeled. By room, I had dump truck, I had donate, donation days, and needless to say, it's not something I would recommend. It was a pound every day, hmm, to anybody. But I was able to move out of that house on October 31st, and I moved into my rental property at that night, October 31st, with my dog and two cats. And the moving truck did not arrive until two days later, November 2nd, I slept on the floor of the rental property for two days. And then I started on my new business a week later, and my husband joined me two weeks after. So, this is where practice management comes in handy. And with my skill set, I figured if I could do that, then I could become a practice manager for anything. And that's how I was able to convince people to hire me for practice management. So anyway, but that's my story. And that's kind of how I fell into it. And then when AI started to pop up, I started to think about, okay, can AI help with passive management? My answer is yes. 
I see AI as a tool. I'm sure all of us who've been using it. It's a tool. We got to know how to use it along the process management tasks that we do in the day of life um, as a project manager. So the way I see it, it helps me to become more efficient, save more time, make better decisions, and earn more time to lead and mentor your team. As a lead project manager, your job is not just you know, putting together a report, putting together a document, and managing the budget, but it's also leading and mentoring your team more than anything. So that's how I look at the AI, because when you're managing multiple projects, you feel like the day that I admit that you're not, you struggle with that balance of being able to lead and mentor your team. Okay, so that's what I was looking at. How do I use the AI to help me become a better project manager? We're always striving to be better. So let's talk about it. If you're not using it, use it. And I want to try to demonstrate how we can use it. So in a daily life of a project manager, we all know what we have to deal with. We have proposals, we help with collaborating, putting together a proposal, statement of work, kick off agenda, the budget, timelines for scheduling, managing the process with the progress, resources, change management, managing the scope creep. Everybody loves managing the scope creep. Then you've got your pre-launch, the launch, the post-launch, and then the retrospective. We got all that, right? That, that, that. But it's not just one website, it's multiple websites that we have ongoing. And then we have other things. We're also helping put together SOP, standard of um, practices. Sometimes the playbook, sometimes we put together training materials, and then we're mentoring and coaching. So that's the day of life of a project manager. So AI can do so many things. It can automate, it can pull real-time data, it can eliminate manual errors, reduce costs, it can also assist the scope creep and a whole lot more. I'm, and with all the tools that I see that are out there, there are so many. The only thing I would say is, I could recommend a few, but you just don't have to experiment and find the one that works best for you. I'll put down a few, and like for SOP, I recommend Scribe. The speaker before, he said there's a loom, and that AI that put together the transcript. That's good. Scribe does something similar, but it's a little bit the next level up, because that was what Scribe's focus is. Scribe overall core purpose is to for project management. So the thought process for AI is helping project managers with the SOPs and other things. So I would recommend taking a look at that. I use Chat Open P, Chat Open AI, and then Magi and that other tool. But for today, I just want to demonstrate how um, you can use it for some application. And then, if you notice that ClickUp introduced AI, Notion has AI, Write has AI, Teamwork has AI. If you're not incorporating them in there, try it. But you just have to figure out how to incorporate using it. Who's using ClickUp? Okay. How about Notion? Okay. How about teamwork? Okay, all right. The trick with AI I found is that you need to coach it, so to speak. Okay, lay the foundation with the chat GPT. I use the Google chat GPT and then I use other things. But I find that when you prep it ahead of time, 
you can get to generate things that you want. I start with putting in the brand voice, the comfort of your client, ideal profile, or the target market, and then your company's core services and values. So for example, the screenshot that I have up here, that comes from uh, chat GPT. There is a section, and I'll show in a minute, how, what chat wants to you know from you, about you. You fill that in. And below to it, you can prepare how you want them to respond. And then this is my example. Uh, and I put up there, I said that I provide web design, digital marketing solution. And then I put in my mission and my passion and then what my goal is, okay? And then down below is my brand voice. And what I want my brand voice to be is my warm approachable. And if you notice, I got a section that says we provide the best practices and growth mindset in our knowledge, okay, to, for our client. Now, I'm not certified from project management. But if you are certified in project management, this is where I will put it. So that the results that you generate, it will pull from the project management, the PMI certification best practices in the outcomes. Now, I played around with it and tinkered with it. And I think this audience here are uh, usually freelancers or small micro agencies and other agencies. I decided I was just focused on a certain level. But I know for a fact that if you put in the practice management, practice, best practices, in that, that's the type of results you're going to get in the outcome. So this is what you be mindful of. And I'm going to demo start demonstrating from here at this point. So when I say chat prompts, and gun is the type of question that you're going to educate chat prompts, okay? You're instructing it what you want, the type of responses that you want. It could be anything, really. And then I have some tips that I found that will generate the best results, but you want to be descriptive. Be clear, concise, and then try to break down complex inquiries, experiment, refine your inquiries, and then start a limit sometimes, and be patient. And this slide I will share at the end, and you can download it. And for me, I've been experimenting for my own project management because with my clients, I've had to tailor, especially with the e-commerce agencies that I work with, I have tailored my set query specifically for that client. And then for other clients, I tailored certain set requirements for that client. So if you are a certain agency, let's say, just to build websites, and they have standard packages, she can have her project manager you know, experiment and then create specific chat uh, queries over time after they experiment and they become standard and then they can use it over and over again. Or the other time they become a standard document and it's done. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. I'm going to start demonstrating here. So this is the uh, document where I typed out to fill out, this is chat GPT. Now, my version is I pay for it. And here's the customer instruction. And this is where I plug in my brand voice, who I am, and then down below, how you want the chat 
to respond. And this is what I'm suggesting. So I'm going to pick on her again, just to, so she's an agency. So up at the top, she's a part of her type and who she is as an agency, her brand voice, her mission statement, the type of clients that they serve, okay? And then down below, it's like, okay, how do they want to respond? So if they are, if her project manager is project manager uh, certified, that's what she's going to put in there. The best practices are practice management certification, blah, 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 okay. But she can also mention in there what are at the bottom. You know, it's the voice tone, you know, warm, confident, engaging, whatever. That part goes in there. And then everything that is generated will come out of that, okay. As a freelancer, the top part is also important. You need to know who you are as a freelancer, okay? Your client, your brand, your personal brand, okay? How do you talk? How do you engage? You put that up at the top and it's down at the bottom. What type of response is that? Even though you say, well, I'm not a project manager, I'm going to say, yes, you are. Yes, you are. You're managing the project, okay? And here you are. Okay, you're going to say that week one, I'm going to be doing this. Week two, I'm going to be doing this. Week three, I'm going to be doing this. You're going to be doing it here. I'm going to say, look, if you want to get more efficient, start making more money, and be able to do more website process, you've got to become a process manager. You can use ClickUp just for yourself and start doing your, organizing your process that way. So you can use this as well. Okay, so, all right. So I'm going to create a new track. Now I have a paid version. It's $20 a month. That's the version, as far as I'm concerned. And you can use 3.5 or GPT-4. I go back, been going with 3.5, I find I get a little bit more better accurate results in uh, 3.4 for some reason. But again, as I mentioned earlier in my tips, you're going to have to experiment. And you also, the outcomes you have to realize, sometimes the outcomes and the results you get you still require your knowledge. Because you will look at the outcome and go, hmm, you know what, I need to tweak this, I need to and then you may make a decision, okay, this is good enough. I'm going to take it and put it in whatever I want and then just add. But what it's done for you is save time instead of using one. Okay, but let me just show you. I created a small, what do you call it, scenario. So my scenario is that we have a website that we're going to build for a CPA. So this is a scenario I created. So we're going to build a website for CPA, and I got a stakeholder in there, and I put in that we're going to build it with a WordPress, and we're going to use some plugins, and I'm going to, let's see here, I put in the hourly rates of a project manager, I put in a junior and a back end, and I put in a copywriter, UI and US designer, and a quality assessment uh, tester, okay? So I needed to create something. Right. So I'm going to take this. Copy this session. I'm going to go in here. You know, page. So I got all that, right? I'm asking about outlining the web. I got a stakeholder. I've got the hourly rates. So I'm going to, based on above, I'm going to start one at a time. I don't want to overwhelm it. I want to create a project plan. 
Kör a házat. Fám. Pés. Fám. Do you have pass? Okay. So what it did was it gave me a breakdown of the product plan. The home page, the back page, service page, blog section, contact, miscellaneous pages. Now I didn't say anything about the miscellaneous pages. Making suggestions. Legal, privacy, terms and conditions, okay? And then the blog section, now I did mention that we wanted some evergreen blog content. So, let's make a recommend for evergreen blog topics. You'll need a copywriter to write the content, estimated hours. So, break it all down, total estimated hours for each, my hours, okay? Now, I put down that the project manager for part-time, me. I'm fascinated. How about part time? Okay. I also like my budget. So when there's a budget in there, we like to have a contingency. Every project management project that we have, we always like to allocate a certain amount of the budget with the contingency. And then when I put in a profit margin of 35% in that budget, So it came up with a total estimated cost price of cost, profit, and contingency for C, for C. So this is the total cost to build that website. Right there. It came up with the estimated hours to build up all that. So you can look at that and go, okay, is this about what? Now, this is for if you don't have a standard. SLP, if you don't have your process, and you should start trying to figure it out, okay? But you look at this and go, mm, all right, what's wrong with it? But let's say you look at this and go, well, my client's not gonna pay for that. I can't swing that. That's a lot of money. You have to play with it and tweak with it. But I wanted to give you an example of Okay. That my assets is my budget is just five thousand. I just spend down three. Project. Now, the burn down rate is where I use to say, okay, the budget is 65000 and I want to set up the timeline by sprints. I need to know how much money I'm going to be burning down each sprint so I can stay within the budget using the team. So who's sprint one? And at the end, I'm able to stay within the budget. Meaning, I'm not going to go over the budget if I follow this sprint. I should be winding down. 
and being able to long to a day within a certain time frame. But again, but you can see how based on the type of questions that you ask, it can break things down for you. Okay, so I'm going to ask another. Okay, let's see here. Create two columns. Let me go to Magi. Now, this is Magi that I've used, which I like, because this is what Magi will do for you. And look at the question that I asked. Using $50,000 as a budget. And I asked the question of create two columns, risk assessment of that same project, the CPA website project. Okay. The burn rate, the price of timeline to meet the price of budget of 50,000. With the price of margin of 35 percent, and we want to launch the website in 56 days. The same people with their hourly rate, and this is what it did for me. Uh, what I like it here, now for some reason, ChatGPT didn't come up with the same risk consistency that they, they did. Project run over time, miscommunication, inaccurate estimation, client is unsatisfied, and then the timeline, milestone, kick off. So, and then down below, I dive deeper into the burn rate. So, that's the one selected into, based on above, create statement of work. Bada boom, bada bang. Done! Done! I like that. Saving time. Okay? Just copy, put it in the back, just give it to your time. Okay? I might use that to type this and then proof it. It's pretty much accurate. I don't have to worry about any type of thing. The only thing I just have to make sure about. This is part where we talked about the budget. Usually I don't like to let the client know how much profit margin that we're making in there. Okay? But that's it. I'm going to go base on above, create kickoff agenda. Now, I think it's too long. We write kickoff agenda for 30 minutes. Okay. 
His most pickup part is about 30 minutes. And then you have a call to action asking for client assets, things that you need to get done. Okay? So what's next? Oh, let's do some long structures. Create a pretty long structure for a website. It gets pretty much a lot on here. Let's take a look at it. Review, design, cross browser, responsiveness. It's pretty impressive. Functionality and performance. User experience. Compatibility. Content management system, analytics and tracking, security and backup, legal and compliance, and then there's user testing, performance testing, and then final check. How many times have we ever forgotten about the 404? <laughs> Building and grammar, and the famous five kinds, those little things, DNS and hosting. Lunch plan. How could we not forget about the lunch plan? Post lunch plan. Documentation. Beta file. Now, create SOP on the Okay, this is the SAP assign team members to the SOP. Okay, so it assigned the team member to the SOP document for the launch check, website launch plan, who the refactability are for the pre-launch preparation. See that? And now the next step obviously is to estimate the time that's involved for each team member. So as you can see, AI can really help with the process management. But you need to figure out as part of your project how to ask the right question. And that it does the work for you. And just use it. But it does take some experimentation. And this is the result now I try to I experiment with this in preparation for this presentation, but as I mentioned earlier, I create a sound for specifically for my clients and using my knowledge and I just tweak and tailor it based on their needs. You can do the same, okay? And I encourage you to use it so that you can become better project manager, become more efficient so you can lead your team, to the next level. That this pretty much wraps it up for my presentation. I'm open to questions. <laughs> yeah, let me put this slide up. Thank you. Yeah. Sure, we have questions. 
Kurt. Any questions? All right, I can't. totally has blown me away. I'm going to be so much more efficient now. Um, my, my question is, um, for like some of the artifacts that my clients want to see, like they do want to see a raising chart. I just add that in or? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Yeah. You can, look, yeah, you can do that. Um, Google Sheets. Hi, you Google Sheets or Excel? Google Sheets. Um, I added a, let me get my sheets up. I had this on, there's a extension that you can add. It's called a sheet, GPT that you can incorporate with uh, Google Sheets and you can ask questions. And the way it works is that when you add a new, let me see if I can. So like right, there's this sheet here and then over here on this side where it says help me organize you capture whatever information, like the RASI sheet, part of it, and put it in here. And again, you're going to have to experiment with it. You can't put a lot in there. You can take portions of it and put it in there. It'll create the foundation of the sheet and build it for you in there. Okay? It's not perfect. But at least the way I see it, it saves you that time of building it, okay? So this is the section that you would incorporate, and then it starts to build up for you, okay? And that is how I was able to build this one to create the burn down short track just by asking questions within the sheet using the sheet Shot GPT um, for the particular project. Okay, so um, that's the only suggestion that I would use. Um, and again, there are uh, apps out there you have to pay for, it, and that's my concern. There's so many project management apps out there, and they're not they're so costly. Yeah, especially when you're a freelance or a small agency and you have to outweigh the budget and go, okay, do I want to pay for this, 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 and all of a sudden you're ending up with $200 a month uh, paying for all these AI apps. I just feel like, okay, whatever you're using, if it's teamwork or if it's click app, I would pay for the click app and then just try to say, okay, maybe one more and then try to use, if you're in Google, use within that and then just build what you can, and then just use your knowledge on top of it. The way I'm looking at it is we're trying to get efficient and be, uh, save time. And that's all the AI tools are. I just don't see the sense of having $200 worth of apps. Just use it where it's appropriate for what you do, okay? If you're doing nothing but creating SLP, I would recommend to pay for the spray because it does so much for us, SOP. But if you don't do a whole lot of SOP, you can do it with the chat GPT. Okay, and Loom, I'll be done with that. Question back here? Oh, yeah. Um, so I, I don't know if you touched on this or if I didn't hear it, but have you experimented with BARD and what is your yeah. take on that versus ChatGPT? I have, and I found BARD not great. <laughs> My personal opinion is that it needs, it's not at that level. So. Hey, the examples that you had on there, um, do you have like a link or something? Because I just wanted to read through it just to see the verbiage that you use. Because I thought that was awesome. I never really thought to 
use it for that. I use it for um, AI for everything else, and I never really thought to use it for. But just to actually read through and get a better understanding of what you wrote and then the type of verbiage that you use. Is there like a link or anything? Like, will you have it online that I can just click to to go and well, you can download my size, but the examples that I put in here, no, I don't have this. Um, but I would be happy to, um, if you contact me through LinkedIn or my email address, I'd be happy to share that document so that you can use those questions to experiment and try to stuff. But again, this is tailored for this um, event. But if you need something tailored for your agency or for your needs or whatever, I'd be happy to consult on that. Thank you for the presentation. I have a question for, for the future. How do you see these tools change the landscape for micro agencies or small companies? Because for me, it seems like these are giving them competitive what do you see um, in the future? That's a big, that's a very good question. I mean, I'm seeing it in so many ways, and in terms of a tool, I see it for in terms of project management. I see it as a tool, as a way to save time and learn how to be a little bit more efficient and get better data to make better decisions. And I'll also be a better leader, okay? I've seen it on uh, the other side in terms of content. Um, I'm not saying it's gonna take over copyright or anything, but in terms of in the agency world, it's gonna help us make better decisions, I think. It's gonna help us become better um, leaders and better in terms of uh, better relationship with our clients with the information that we have. And that's what I see. If we use a properly. Question? Right here? I have a two part question. How much time did it take you to figure this out? And then how much time do you think this has saved you maybe every week? Oh, good question. Um, in preparation for my uh, work camp, it probably took me maybe four hours of experimenting and then crafting all the questions. So I didn't even show you all of them. Um, so I would say about four hours off and on, not consistently, but total, because I was experimenting. Look, I knew the questions I wanted to ask. But it was trying to get the results that I thought that were logical, right results that made sense for the outcomes I was looking for, because I'm coaching the chat GPT, basically, training it uh, for this event. But for me, as a project manager for my clients, I would say it would save me and I was, oh God, <laughs> probably another part time. I mean, the way I see it, 15 hours a week. Because I'm man of oh god of six websites um, in a week, and then so any time, any way I can save more time, so I can spend more time with people. Because I'm a client facing project manager, I would rather spend more time talking with my client and more time talking with my team than I do generating reports. So if I can do that. That's what it does. It saves me probably another 15 hours a week that way. But perfect. Okay. Let's get to see another round of applause. Thank you.